After finishing the WPT World Championship Festival with big score after big score in the most exciting month of poker that I've ever played, including making the final table of the $50,000 Super High Roller that was highlighted in the previous two episodes, it's time to get back into the cash game streets. We head to Austin, Texas, which has become a poker mecca, but it's not just the poker that I enjoy. The city itself is one of my top three favorite places to travel to in the U.S., my girlfriend and I arrive a few days early and stay downtown to enjoy some world famous barbecue. We have dinner at my favorite steakhouse in town called Jay Carver. Everything on the menu that we try is delicious. We also see a show at the Comedy Mothership, which is something that I've wanted to do since the place opened. I'm happy to support the local comedy scene and Joe Rogan's establishment in particular after he mentioned our place on his podcast. There's these card places. There's one out in Round Rock that's this big fucking card, card place. And, you know, like high-level guys go there and they play and they play tournaments and he makes money. Like, he's a real poker player. Watching all the performers inspires me to make my first ever stand-up appearance. I have to admit, I was a little nervous going into it, but I just pretended like no one was there. It's now time to grind at the friendliest place to play. We arrive at the Lodge Card Club to battle in a match-the-stack 5-10 game that'll play more like a high-stakes 25-50 multiple straddles almost every hand and a lineup consisting of several players that are capable of taking insane lines. I get 2,000 in small denomination chips because that's the max to start, but I've got another 15,000 in chips behind that I plan to add on once stacks get deeper. I put those additional chips in the rack as smoothly as possible like a seasoned pro. Finally, we make it to the stream room. We're playing against mostly guys who just play for fun, including a few from Florida. It should be an exciting session with massive pots. A few orbits in, the nick game is on and so is the double straddle to 50 when Crypto Max raises to 150 from the cutoff. Max already won a hand and doesn't have his nit button anymore. Big Daddy Chaz has already won a hand as well and doesn't have his nit button either, but what he does have is a suited king in the small blind and the heart of someone nicknamed Big Daddy Chaz. He puts in the 3 bet to 650. I'm one of two players left with a knit button, and we've got king-queen suited in the under-the-gun plus one double straddle. I know that Chaz likes a three-bet light because I played with him a handful of times previously, and he's already three-bet at a higher frequency than normal this session. We've got great removal to high pocket pairs and strong aces. With the double straddle to 50, we've essentially got about 40 big blinds in our stack. I'm not folding this good of a hand given the circumstances. I'm not calling either. Vaughn. All in, Brad trying to get rid of his nit button and not have to pay the tax. 2000? Uh, close. I think it might be a little bit more. We get through the initial pre-flop raiser who's holding the best hand with ace nine. We have Big Daddy Chaz completely crushed. He's getting about two to one on a call, but he obviously can't stick around with king five suited after facing a cold four bet shove when he's caught scraping the bottom of the three bet bin. Chaz stuns everybody and makes the shocking call. I figure we're behind or flipping at best. Instead, you can see on my face, I'm not only surprised by what we got called by, I'm surprised that we've got the commanding lead. It's not often that you get it in with king high and have over 70% equity. We still need to hold to win a pot more than 4,500, and we're only running it once. The flop comes 10-4 deuce rainbow. Aside from Chaz having some backdoor draws, there's not much to be concerned about. The turn is the six of hearts to get the juices flowing and make us sweat as it's a card that looks like a five, plus it gives the opponent a gut shot straight draw. The river is another one that looks too much like a five or three, but it pairs the four and our king queen gets us the all in victory. We double up and avoid having to pay the nit tax to each player. It's nice to get off to a good start. I appreciate the action from Big Daddy Chaz. The very next hand, Chaz picks up the Robbie on the button. It's not mandatory to play it, but Chaz has never seen two cards that he doesn't like, particularly when he's on the button. I once saw Chaz raise, holding the three of clubs and a gift card to Applebee's. Chaz raises to 100. We look down at Ace Jack suited in the under the gun straddle. We can call or three bet. I like somewhat disguising the strength of our hand and allowing an opponent like Chaz the opportunity to bluff if we can make an unexpected top pair better. I call for 75 more, we're heads up out of position, the flop comes 10-9-4 rainbow, we've got two overs and some backdoor draws. I check to the pre-flop aggressor, without much hesitation, the button fires a c-bet for 75. I'm not ready to give up when there are a lot of cards that can give us top pair or a big draw on the turn. We're supposed to call the majority of the time while mixing in some raises. I call, the dealer puts out the eight of clubs giving us an open-ended straight draw, I check. 
Chaz has us in awful shape since he's got the same draw but managed to flop bottom pair. He turns his hand into a bluff as he overbets 500. We have removal to the straight and know that Chaz makes these types of moves regularly without having a real hand. The problem is that we've got nothing with showdown value at the moment. I'm not ready to give up that easily though. All in from Brad. We fight fire with fire. After seeing a big bet from someone wearing a Bucky's gas station hoodie, we say, I see your bet, but I'm not afraid. Let's play for all of it as we represent Queen Jack. What's even better for us is that Chaz is holding the jack of clubs, making it less likely that we're shoving as a bluff with some type of straight and flush draw combo. I gotta give Chaz credit for even contemplating sticking around after he's been check jammed on. Most people would have folded instantly. Chaz is willing to reveal what he's gotten himself into this pickle with. Of jack four. BDC has the Robbie. Can I find a call? <laughs> Usually, I just stay silent when opponents are deciding whether or not to call an all-in, but this set up too perfectly for a joke, and I can't help myself. Robbie was. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't fair. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Maybe Chaz picked up on a verbal tell because not long after, Big Daddy Chaz finds the call, risking his entire stack to play a $5,200 all-in with fourth pair and a straight draw. I get owned with the call as I'm drawing slim. Against anyone else at the table, I'm not sure that I would have made the same play, but I'm a lot more willing to give Chaz an opportunity to win a big pot from me after he gave us action with King-5 suited. The river's the nine of diamonds. Chaz wins all his money back from me and a little bit more. If he had turned his jack-4 offsuit over and played it face up, I would have made the exact same move and expected a fold from him on the turn. He likely picked up something from the way that I joked with him before he made a great call. Chaz may do some wild things, but he's no dummy. He's a savvy and perceptive player. I'm annoyed with myself for losing the pot and for saying anything when I usually stay quiet. It was nice having a couple thousand in profit, but I don't even hang on to it for one whole hand. It all evaporated. After adding on, we play another round of the Nick game. With a double straddle in play, Florida Bill raises to 150. We're in the cutoff with the same hand, 8-7, only we're suited. I call. F and Bob is on the button with a baby pocket pair. He calls. The big blind calls with pocket nines. The action's on Cinnabon, who's always smelling delicious in malls. He's in the under-the-gun straddle with a notorious Jack-4 offsuit and a short stack. This is a dangerous setup. Cinnabon 3-bet jams for about 1100 is a squeeze. Most of us fold, but the big blind has a real hand though. He calls. Nines end up holding on two separate runouts. It's not a significant hand from our perspective since we lost $150 and got out of there. But when I see people at the table repeatedly doing insane stuff while the knit game is on and getting it in with Jack-4 and King-5, I take mental notes so that I can potentially revert back to them while I'm making decisions against the same opponents later in sessions. Another interesting hand that I store in my brain occurs a bit later when Chaz 3-bets 9-8 suited. We already know that he often 3-bets light, but it's the post-flop play that's particularly interesting. Chaz C bets a small amount on a flop that isn't too great for him. He gets raised by pocket jiggities. Chaz then calls with nothing but two small overs and some backdoor draws, while he's drawing incredibly slim. The turn pairs the board, causing Chaz's equity to drop all the way to zero. He checks. F and Bob doesn't mind the extra deuce. He bets 11.25. Chaz didn't float the flop to quit on a pretty blank turn. We've seen before that he really hates folding. In this instance, he checks shoves for over 6,000 effective. To his credit, it puts Jiggities in a somewhat tough spot, but most people are going to call. Bob takes his time to deliberate, then comes to a decision. I call. He makes the call! Okay. I'm way behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm actually drawing dead. <laughs> drawing dead. When I see the check raise shove with complete air, a few thoughts come to mind for when I get into future hands with Chaz. One is that I need to be way more willing to gamble with him by calling lighter because he's putting his entire stack at risk regularly with nothing. Also, I need to minimize bluffing him because he's almost never folding. Chaz is always making the games a lot more interesting to watch because he's constantly getting involved, as evidenced here by his 50% VPIP. I'm again, one of two players left with the nit button in front of him. The only other player who has one is Cinnabon, who we see putting the double straddle on to 50. Once Chaz sees this, he quickly flicks in the triple straddle to 100. Florida Bill likes what's happening and also wants to partake. He puts out the quadruple straddle to 200. 
510 game has now become a 510, 25, 50, 100, 200 game. We're on the button and sort of under the gun plus one with ace three suited. Our stack has been shrunk to 18 and a half big blinds while we're heads up to lose the nick game. It's not a super comfortable situation, but I open jam about $3,700, hoping that no one behind us wakes up with anything strong. One by one, each player looks down at garbage and has to fold. We narrowly avoid losing the nick game once more and feel relieved to win several hundred without seeing a run out. The table decides to play one more round of the nick game. After taking a quick bathroom break, we see me return to the studio in the top left part of the screen. I'm glad that I came back in time to see that we've been dealt ace-queen offsuit middle position. I've added on quite a bit. I'm in for 12,000 total, so I'm stuck almost 3,000. I raised to 75. F and Bob has a nip button. He calls. Crypto Max makes a light call from the button. This is set up pretty similarly to the hand when Cinnabon 3-bet jammed Jack-4 offsuit as a squeeze earlier. He's got a slightly better hand right now, but he makes the same decision to 3-bet rip it for about 2,000. Big Daddy Chaz wastes no time before grabbing some yellows and 4-betting to 4,000, presumably to isolate Cinnabon. These guys have already made some outside-the-box plays. In a normal game, I'd snap full the Ace-Queen offsuit without even thinking about it. With the dynamics at play and the Nick game being on, with the removal we've got, I'm willing to gamble. As long as we're not up against Aces, we'll have a decent amount of equity. I 5-bet Jim, thinking there's a good chance Ace-Queen is best, or we're flipping. That's not the case. F and Bob and Crypto Max fold. Chaz makes the easy call for a little over 5,000 more. We're in a three-way all-in with over 20,000 in the middle. I get it in with the worst of it once more against Big Daddy Chaz. He's who I really want to beat because the side pot is significantly larger than the main pot. We're running it one time. The flop comes Queen 10-9 with two spades. We all get a piece of it. We've got top top and snatched the lead away from Ace King, but Chaz can still hit a King or Jack in order to beat us. Meanwhile, Cinnabon flops bottom set to have us both in trouble, but I'm not too worried about that. I still just want to win the $14,000 side pot. Actually, I take that back. Let's try to win all of it. In order to do that, we're going to need to improve on the turn. The dealer puts out the ace of clubs. We've got top two pair now. We can win all of it by hitting either the case ace or one of two remaining queens in the deck. It's time for some extra run good. Hit the like button on the count of three for good luck. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, that didn't work at all. Only one conclusion can be drawn from that river. Some of you obviously didn't hit the like button. I lose over $9,000 in one of the most painful ways possible. I had so much hope when the flop and turn came out, but the river devastatingly causes me to lose to both opponents. There are a few things that I could have done differently in that hand. For one thing, I could have just folded preflop. It's kind of tough though against the two wildest opponents at the table. I also could have just taken a bit longer in the bathroom, which I'll strongly consider doing next time. With this loss, I'm down $12,000. I'm currently the biggest loser in the game. I'm frustrated, mostly with myself, and I just hate losing in general, especially on stream. I take a little break to think about whether or not I really want to keep playing. The game is still good, so if I can rein it in and maybe make some big hands, I should be able to get at least a large chunk back. I return a few minutes later with a lot more chips. The first hand back, F and Bob limps in for 10 from under the gun in a rare unstraddled pot. Big Daddy Chaz raises to 75 from the cutoff. Mo has a nip button and a suited one gapper in the small blind. He calls. We wake up with Ace King suited in the big blind. It feels like this hand is mocking me when I pick it up immediately after getting stacked by it, but I make a large 3 bet to 500. F and Bob isn't interested anymore. He folds. Big Daddy Chaz is out to get every single Bradley dollar that he can. He calls knowing that he rocked me last round, but he can knock me out with another all in that goes his way. Mo folds, we're heads up out of position, the flop comes, ace queen jack rainbow, we've got top top with a broadway draw and a backdoor flush draw. I check to see what the opponent wants to do. He's got no piece of it and he checks back. The turn is the six of hearts, we pick up the flush draw, it's time to start building this pot. I reach for chips in order to make a small bet of 350. I'm not sure that there's any amount Chaz would have called with his 8-7 offsuit, he folds immediately. This isn't a huge pot, but it does a lot to restore some confidence as we win several hundred and get rid of our nip button. Next, I'm in the double straddle to 50. F and Bob, F and Limps in. If 
folds around to Florida Bill in the big blind. He's effing Bob's effing friend, but the friendship goes out the window as Bill raises to 150. Mo's in the under the gun straddle and wants to see a flop. He calls. We've got pocket sixes and we're facing a small sizing while we're in position against the pre-flop raiser. I call for 100 more. Bob calls for 100 more as well. We're going four ways to the flop. The dealer puts out jack nine six with two spades. We drill our first set of the day with multiple opponents and everyone's got a piece. The big blind has middle pair and a backdoor flush draw with one over. He bets 225. Mo Money needs to make sure that he's got the suits that he thinks he has. They're both spades like he was hoping. Mo Money might be about to run into Mo problems as he takes inventory of his chips, realizes that he doesn't have a ton left, and then raises all in for about 2200 It's not very often that I flop a set, then see a bet, followed by an overbet jam. I want to at least try to keep a top pair or over pair type of hand in that are drawing close to dead. I just call, even though calling is still going to look really strong. Bob is in a very strange situation with top pair and a decent kicker, but all three players in front of him have shown a lot of interest, so top pair isn't looking all that appealing. He folds. Florida Bill isn't confident in his second pair. He folds as well. It's down to heads up. I turn over the set, suspecting that it's likely the best hand. Mo takes a little time before revealing that he is very live with his flush draw. It's a big all-in pot that we desperately need to win in order to chip away at our deficit. The turn is the four of clubs. It's a blank that gets us closer to the victory. The river is another nine. We improve to a full house and win it all. It feels good to take down a large pot, but I'm still stuck about 8,500. Mo's the only player down more than me. He decides to call it a day. I don't blame him at all. I thought about leaving earlier too, but now I'm back in the zone. We've got a little momentum on our side. We just need to keep it going. In this one, Chaz has a real starting hand that he raises to 100 with, which is rare. We're on the button with pocket nines. I call hoping that all those episodes I've watched of Gold Rush will help me with my mining skills. Bob's in the small blind with a couple of high cards that are in trouble. He calls. Patches calls in the big blind. He does a lot of work for The Lodge, my second YouTube channel called Brado and Clips, and my Facebook page. Crypto Max calls light in the straddle. It's a Texas heads up hand. We're going five ways to the flop. It comes 8-4-3 rainbow. We're the only one with a pair. Checks to us. We've got a hand that's strong in the moment, but we don't want to see an overcard come out because any overcard that's not a jack will cause us to lose the lead. I bet 175 in order to clear out some of the garbage hands that have equity. Bob can't continue on after I've bet into four opponents. He folds. Patches has this look in his eyes like he's about to do something nuts. Not only is he a talented poker player, I suspect that he's one of the world's best pool hustlers, even though he's gone mid six figures into debt playing the extremely long game. No scratch, no scratch, no scratch. <laughs> wow, it's like watching a master class in deception. No one else on the planet is good enough to pull off this shot in which he not only immediately scratches, but he also makes the opposing team's ball in. It all looks so natural and effortless. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. The worst possible. Don't be fooled by his impeccable acting abilities. As soon as he starts playing for real, we're all going to lose a lot of money to him. Back to the hand, Patches puts in the check raise to 600 to represent, you know, something or another. The two players in between us fold. I couldn't be more in the blender even if I was shrunk down to the size of a nickel trying to figure out how to escape so that I could get a job at Google. Three and a half seconds after being in the tank, I finally come to a decision. On. All, in. All in from Brad with the overpair. Patches is going to lay it down. It was a bold attempt by the opponent to get a bonus from us. It's a nice sized pot that we're able to win. I still have plenty of work to do though. Here we've got King 6 suited in middle position. I want to keep the V-pip up. I raise a 75. Evan Bob's just been sitting back, letting the big pots and big hands come to him. He's only in for his initial 2000 and he's by far the biggest winner of the session. Bob calls, Crypto Max makes the call. Chaz calls the set mine. Florida Bill has the option to close the action and doesn't want to miss out on the party. He calls as well. We're going five ways to the flop. It comes Jack 10 6 Rainbow. We're in the lead with bottom pair and some backdoor draws. Checks to us. I check. Bob has a gut shot straight draw with two overs. He semi bluffs for 125. Max has some backdoor draws that aren't particularly strong, especially with so many other opponents still with cards, but he makes the call. Big Daddy Chaz folds followed by a Florida Bill fold. There's a slim chance that our pair is good, but if not, we're getting a good price with plenty of cards that can help us improve, and we're closing the action. I call to see a turn. 
the dealer puts out the seven of hearts, it's not one that anyone likes all that much, everyone checks. The river's the king of clubs, we improved a top and bottom pair, but more straights get there, and one of the other opponents could have a hand like king jack or king ten that has us beat. I'm first to act, I don't want to check because most hands worse than ours will check back. I bet 375 to maybe get calls out of king queen, king nine, or possibly queen jack or ace jack. Unfortunately, Bob drilled Broadway, and he won't be calling our bet. He grabs some Barney colored chips and puts in a big raise to 2,000. Max makes a disciplined lay down with nine high, I gotta give him credit there. I already suspected that the River King might be trouble. Now we've got even more evidence that it is. I won't be paying off this raise. Quick lay down. Lord of poker, man, coming strong. That's gonna be frustrating for Brad. He sees that he made a nice little lay down, so that's gotta feel good at least, but king of clubs. The session's winding down and opportunities to get unstuck are diminishing as Chaz raises to 150 with a double straddle on. We've got a suited ace in the big blind, I'd like to get involved. I call, Patches is in the double straddle, he calls with some Broadway cards, three of us are seeing the flop, it comes 5-3 deuce rainbow, we've got a gutter with one over and a backdoor flush draw. I check, Patches checks, the cutoff will have a higher straight than us if a 4 comes out, he bets 150. We could have the best hand and there are plenty of cards that'll help us. I call to see what develops on the turn. Patches folds, it's down to heads up. The turn is the three of hearts pairing the board and giving us a flush draw. I get a little unorthodox with a lead for 300 as a semi bluff. I'm not sure I like this bet by me because it doesn't achieve much since all hands better than mine are still gonna call, even stronger ace highs will stick around. The only thing it sort of accomplishes is that it allows us to get to the river for a potentially lower price and it opens some doors for us to bluff river as we're now the aggressor. All of that quickly falls apart as Big Daddy Chaz senses weakness and raises to 1400. I, in turn, get the sense that the opponent is telling a Big Daddy lie with his story. He's representing really strong hands like straights, full houses, maybe trip threes that'll have a few combinations of, and possibly over pairs, but he probably just calls with some of those. Against certain opponents who I know to be tight and straightforward, I fold to the raise knowing that I might be drawing dead. With Chaz, the opposite's true. Not only could my draw be very live, ace high could easily be the best hand. I already saw him get it in with no chance of winning earlier with 9-8 suited against Bob's pocket jacks. I call for 1100 more. Chaz may think that I'm slow playing a strong hand, or more likely, I've got something like a medium pocket pair that has some showdown value, or a pair of fives that just isn't ready to abort yet. The river's the queen of hearts giving us the backdoor flush, we drill a well-concealed monster. I'm concerned that if we check, Chaz might give up on his bluffs after we called his big turn raise. I don't want him to suspect that we're trapping him with a full house, and like I said earlier, Chaz is a savvy player, so I go to a trap that's next level up and put out a tiny river bet of 400 designed to look like I don't have anything that strong, but still could just have a pair of fives or a hand like pocket sevens or eights that wants to get to showdown cheaply. Most players absolutely hate having to fold when they're getting 10 to 1 pot odds, so I left an opening for the opponent to once again think that he might be able to steal this pot from us with nothing if he keeps the pressure on and raises on back-to-back -back streets. It's not going to work though. I'm hoping that he's going to raise, and raise big. Chaz winds up and goes with a massive sizing of 4,600. I call before his chips hit the felt. You win. Snap call. Yep. Very there well you go, played. Brad Owen. 12,790. This is the first five-figure pot that we've won today. Chaz got the best of me a few times. We've had some fun back and forth battles throughout the session though. This one happens to go our way as the small river lead trap works to perfection. I was considering leaving the stream early after losing the three-way all-in. Instead, I stuck it out and I've recovered nearly everything that I lost. I'm down less than a thousand at the moment. That's a good feeling after being the biggest loser for a lot of the session. I'd like to keep playing in order to get every penny back, but the stream comes to an end before we're able to reach that goal. Bob's the only significant winner, fleecing everyone for over $25,000 in profit. When all is said and done, I lose a manageable 2000 which feels like a win. That was a crazy session, played for about five hours on the stream and just was super card dead to start out. And uh, 
you know, got into that massive all-in with uh, Ace-Queen versus Ace-King versus pocket nines for a $20,000 pot. So to lose that and, and only lose, end up losing 2,000 on the day was pretty awesome. And then I approached Chaz after the stream and I told him that that jack forehand didn't seem right. And so I kind of pressured him into giving me half my money back and I uh, feel pretty good about that. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Couple of announcements. The first one is that WPT Global is not taking a rake for their MTTs for almost the entire month of April. I have more information in the description box below, but if you sign up using the bonus code BRAD, that'll give you a deposit match bonus for up to $1,200 and more. Definitely take advantage of that. Also, my son Henry is almost four weeks old now, so he's basically taking care of himself. He's about to move out and uh, he's got a full-time job and everything, which really helps me out because now I'm able to go ahead and go on some poker trips. And I'm doing a meetup game at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida, April 18th. We're gonna be playing 2-5, that's gonna be a blast. I'll be there for a couple days playing the WPT uh, championship event as well. From there, I'm going out to the Lodge in Austin, Texas. I'll be hosting a meetup game with Andrew Nimi and Mariano. We're playing 1-2 on April 23rd. Don't miss that. It's the best time to come out to the Lodge because we're kicking off the Lodge Championship Series. I'll be there for about the first 10 days of the Lodge Championship Series. That's gonna be a lot of fun. So even if you can't make the meetup game, uh, hopefully you can make it out there and uh, we'll get a chance to play some poker together. And then finally, I'm going out to Montreal for the World Poker Tour um, Championship event. And I believe we'll be hosting a meetup game kind of during the prime, but uh, I'll have more details on that in a future episode. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.